So the other night at our Collider Screening Q&A, Rob had mentioned that you really liked Host and you two had been in touch. Was it the, the kind of situation where you saw that movie, you liked it so much and you reached out to him? No. <laughs> I was wondering. Was not the case. Um, I loved Host. I thought it was incredible. It was one of the great gifts uh, to us horror hounds during the pandemic. But no, I was sent this script by uh, Dan. The man on the board there, Dan Cohen of 21 Laps, who I've known for a long time. And Dan um, said, this is the role. The director and I think it's perfect for you. You got to do it. And I read it and I said, absolutely not. No interest <laughs> in portraying Lester Billings. I don't care to go there. I don't, I've done too, too much stuff in the darkness. I need a break and I can't do it. And then Dan is many things, a gifted producer, a wonderful human being, but he's also like relentless. And he just kept talking to me and saying, if I could just get you to talk to Rob and hear his vision of what, you know, he thinks that Lester could be and what you could do with it. I was like, I don't, I don't, I just, I don't know if I have the capacity in me right now to go where we need to go. We're coming out of a pandemic. It's been a dark time in all of our lives. Now bring to life a guy who in many ways just represents so many of the things that scare me the most about this life. And then of course that fateful zoom finally happens with Rob Savage and I go, oh, I love this guy. And yeah, we're going to do this movie together. So what did he say during that zoom that, that not only gave you the confidence in him, that he'd be a good leader for you to work on this part with, but also in yourself that you could go there, do it well, but also be able to come out of it. Immediately, I got the truth of Rob's vision as a director that spoke to his insistence that this was going to be a f overall film um, that was not um, constructed for the device of mere entertainment or scares. And that a uh, character like Lester was not a mere device as a conduit of information and as for lack of a better term, a kind of trope, a kind of um, caricature of the Southern yokel guy that um, I kind of got the feeling that he was in the short story. And he understood why this world was going to lean more towards the creation and telling of a story, something like uh, ordinary people as opposed to um, Scarehouse. So I was like, okay, I'm listening. And he started talking about the need to really invite, you know, Chris's character's mind and heart into a, a place uh, with this interaction that he has with Lester that then is going to open a door for the audience to become vulnerable and start caring about these people in a way that will be meaningful because it's talking about a subject that's actually really meaningful to me. Lost really important people to me over the last few years. Grief is a bitch. It is as horrifying as some of the human emotions can be that we experience. And watching and hearing Rob talk that first conversation with the genuine and authentic care that he had about it meant a lot to me. Oh, I have so many follow-up questions. The first one, the first one that I really want to make sure I ask you, and it, I feel like there's going to be no simple answer to this, but what is it like playing Lester in a way where the audience needs to to feel for him, for his loss, and and sympathize with him a bit, but then also have him have a, like a sinister presence where, where the audience knows that by him stepping into that house, something bad could happen at any second. So in embodying what it is that Lester needs to bring to the table in this story, I felt like I was going to be juggling a couple of different balls that were really important. And the first and foremost, most important to me was creating a human being that hopefully people could believe, could connect to, could understand um, if they didn't have maybe Lester's life experience or they didn't come from his part of the world, they could at least see in him a commonality in the way that they feel like sometimes their suffering is so isolating. And then 
because of the nature of the story that we're telling, because of the tone of the film that Rob's making, and because of the source material that comes from the king himself, there is something that needs to keep everybody, including Chris, who plays Will, on their toes. What is Lester up to? Like, what is this guy capable of? What is about to happen? That's the storytelling fun. There's that device um, in great horror uh, that you try to craft a, a narrative where people are just so on the edge of their seats because they don't know what's going to happen next. So you're doing that while at the same time trying to ground this in, you know, real human emotion. That's that scene. It's it keeps you on the edge of your seat, but draws you in at the same time. And like you're you're getting dangerously close, but you can't help yourself. I love it. It was great to shoot. It was a gift. It was like being back in theater. And I loved um, knowing that at any second things could implode. Mm -hmm. Things could go sideways. Uh, you take a lot of risk when you're, you know, choosing to act in different ways. And I felt like with this, I wanted to really be as vulnerable as I possibly could so that we could create attention. Again, I think that scene just has so much weight on it. You have to really crank up the tension for this film and really introduce some ideas and concepts that are going to then propel us into the rest of this story. So I was so scared, like taking on that responsibility as well, just because of the fear of going places, you know, emotionally and physically, but also the pressure of like, this scene has to work. This scene needs to work. If it doesn't work, film doesn't work. You brought this up and we spoke a bit about it at the press conference. If this is the scariest role you've ever tackled and jumped into, it makes me wonder what is number two? <laughs> They're all scary, to be quite honest. I, I, I was terrified. I made a film called um, animals that deals with addiction um, that was terrifying for me because I am someone who's, you know, uh, dealt with addiction and mental illness uh, my most of my life, uh, 21 years clean this year. But I feel like anytime you go into that space, it's making yourself vulnerable. And I did a film called Prisoners with Denis Villeneuve and playing Bob Taylor was really tricky for me because um, it deals with some of the themes and things that scare me the most about this life. Um, I recently did a film called Late Night with the Devil, which really scared me and mental breakdowns. There's a lot um, on stage as well, but Lester was its own kind of fear, bringing Lester Billings to life. And being a part of this film was like its own kind of terror. That terror was well worth jumping into. You're so good. Thank you. So you bring up Denis there and you've worked with so many incredible directors now, including Rob. We've got Chris Nolan, James Gunn. I could go on and on. They're all different filmmakers, but do you notice a shared quality that they all have that signal to you that they are a directing great and also an ideal collaborator for me? There's absolutely one commonality because they're all so different. I've been so blessed. I've gotten to work with David Lynch and James Gunn and Chris Nolan, Denny Villeneuve, you know, Peyton Reed, Rob Savage. I, I can't even, so many, it's embarrassing because I know I'll forget to say somebody, but the, the one link, the thing that unites them all, and Rob has this, is a confidence in their vision. They know what it is that they need to achieve. They know what every scene is about. They know the tone, the world that they're building, and they may have different ways of going about bringing that to life, different styles, different energies. That's wonderful. But as soon as you step into the ring with them and you know that they've got the confidence that they know exactly where they need to get you to and that they can help carry you there um, with the you know uh, power of both their preparation, their discipline, their hard work, their talent, and their that magical gift thing, um, helps you just give yourself over to whatever they need. Beautiful answer. I wanted to wrap with one Oppenheimer question because you were just talking about some of your fears tackling a challenging role. And I've heard Chris Nolan say that that was one of his most challenging projects he's ever done. And given what I've seen of his in the past, I, I can't imagine why anything is a challenge for him anymore. So from your vantage point on that set, what are you looking around and maybe spotting as a real big challenge for an auteur like Christopher Nolan? That's a tough question because when you're on set 
with when you're on set with Christopher Nolan, I assure you there's no clue as to what it is that may be haunting him or um, instilling any kind of fear in him because he's such a great leader. So you just feel the confidence coming from him that is not ego and it's not pride. It's just true confidence that he has a story he needs to tell and you're lucky enough to get to be a part of the ride. I would believe that. I would believe that. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you all. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you.